that it be. September 20th meeting of the Planning Commission. Um, fellow commissioners, the first item on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. You'll note that one item that was uh, originally posted under new business, that is special use 170801, Golden Springs LLC Forest Home has been removed from the agenda uh, due to some issues with the notice and some questions about the uh, kind of ownership information on the, on the application itself. So uh, that has been uh, pulled from the uh, from the amendment. So are there any other suggestions or changes to the agenda? Other new business, um, we just took the chairman uh, to uh, add two things. Number one, discuss the uh, proposed uh, BZA appointment to the Planning Commission for 2018. And the two other items is for the uh, <coughs> discuss short, briefly the appointment plans. So, with the second one, comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan. Just an update? Just a little general discussion. Uh, I'm going to take that in the form of a motion. Is there anybody, is there anybody second those items? I'll second that. Discussion? Sure. Um, with respect to the comp plan, I didn't know if I have a copy on there. Are we going to be, is the idea to go through it or just to? Just, I think we just need to get some direction. We haven't mentioned the comp plan in the last two or three meetings, and uh, it just seems like it keeps on getting forgotten and put off and it's getting to, to be quite old now and we, we, we need to, to, to talk about getting refocused on that. And I think chapter six is to the supervisors and their remiss also and we're remiss and not having focused on that. And I actually ask that that be put on the October 2nd agenda for the, for the BOS. But, okay. Any other discussion? It sounds like the motion is to just sort of talk about it and kind of get a line on, on the plan for understanding correctly. Um, all in favor of the amend the amended agenda? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then we'll adopt the agenda. The next item on the agenda is to review the minutes from our August 16th meeting. Um, I noted there was one minor matter on the on the last vote where there were two abstentions. And both Cali was listed as three to two, probably should be three to zero, um, with two abstaining. Um, any other comments or corrections to the minutes from last month? People have, have people had a chance to review them? Did you get a copy? I think they were on, were they on board docs? Mm -hmm. on. <clears throat> I think, I think here's one thing we need to talk about here too. You know, uh, we've gone through a number of changes here and several board members, uh, uh, they, they've always received their documentation uh, for the meetings through the mail. And through the changes that we had every time, you know, some of the procedures that we had followed for years and years got lost. And I think, like Mr. Brown, the one person had always got his mail mm. items mailed to him, and that's got forgotten. We need to get back on track. A couple of things like that. Yeah, I might suggest perhaps Mr. Brown have a separate conversation with Mr. Danlin to make make that arrangement. Um, whatever meets the need there. Um, any other comments on the on the minutes for tonight? If not, I entertain a motion to approve them as amended. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. At this time, um, I'll open the public comment period. Uh, because we don't have any specific applications, we don't have a very large crowd tonight, and, and frankly, because several of our items have 
new business uh, and old business are somewhat related. Uh, I think I'm just going to have suggest one comment period this evening. Um, so if you have any comment in general or about any of the specific items on our agenda this evening, uh, you're welcome to make those comments during this uh, one and only public comment meeting for this evening. Please, uh, if you're going to comment, state your name and address and try to keep your comments to three minutes. Yes, Mr. Burke. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Phil Burke with Flint Hill. I would like to invite all of the members of the Planning Commission, uh, everybody in the community, as a matter of fact, to the farm tour, which is coming up for the ninth annual event. Uh, the 11 farms open to the public in Rappahannock County. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to uh, join us. Uh, if you would like to get some information all the way from lavender to llamas, uh, <laughs> very, very agricultural product. Yeah, as you know, agriculture and the tourism are our big things in Rappahannock. And uh, I think you'll find it an educational experience, a little fun. Uh, delighted to meet you. And once again, welcome to the farm tour this Saturday and Sunday, 10 until 5 on the number venues. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment this evening? Yes, ma'am. It's Yoko Barsky, uh, Hampton District. Uh, uh, will you be having a public comment for the, each section of the uh, proposed amendments later? No, or this is, you will not, this is it. Okay, one thing I do not see on the proposed thing is that uh, uh, definition of bed and breakfast and the tourist home are very, very similar and no distinctions done. And actually, I have emailed uh, all of you a couple times about that, that uh, bed and breakfast actually serves breakfast. Tourist homes do not. Bed and breakfast has on-site managers, either uh, uh, the owner or a uh, hired manager. That is not uh, stated here as a distinction. And I feel that's important to distinguish these two. Otherwise, why do you distinct them all? You know, why do you make the difference? I know you talked about it in one of the meetings, but it's not uh, reflected in here. And uh, um, one other thing, I think, was that the Airbnb is not the address. And how this uh, registration of all these accommodations will be registered in this county. That is not the address either, unless you have some other plans to do it. And I'd like to know about those. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Jock Nash with uh, the Hampton District. Uh, I'd like to know if the uh, uh, Planning Commission has run into the issue of uh, hunters BNB, BNBR, where hunters from all over the country can, can sign up and go hunting on various properties. I had a, I had a guy in a suburban with guns all over the place and fishing rods sticking out of his uh, suburban that entered my property from an adjoining property, the Whipperwill property. And I went out and saw him and, and uh, asked him what in the hell he was doing. And he said, oh, I was just, I'm from Annandale and we're gonna be hunting out here and I like to, I can look at my firing lines and stuff like that. And I, I wanna know uh, what the county is doing about that. And if it is, uh, what are the rules and regulations that private property owners can have while, you know, uh, uh, have other people respect our private property. And uh, we went onto the Whipperwill estate today and looked at one of their deer blinds is 150 steps from our property line where we walk dogs in the morning and the night and all during the day. All, you know, 150 steps, that's all. And another one was about 200. And so now they're putting these blinds and someone is uh, 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 at the very extreme end of their property, which adjoins ours, and uh, and shooting our way, 
So uh, if, if someone would, uh, if the planning commission would like, let me know what my rights are, I know what I'll do if he comes back again. But I just want to know what, 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 the, what the county's doing. If there's such a thing as BNBR hunting rights, because that'll change. Uh, this guy didn't know the property lines. He didn't know anything. And he wasn't from this area. I love hunters. They can do it all they want. The last time I went hunting was in Vietnam. But I, I, I don't hunt anymore, but I do respect hunters. And I respect owners of property to be able to have hunting on their property. But I want to make sure that we have some sort of way of, of coordinating. Do yeah. you understand? Can I ask you to just clarify, if you would, I'm not familiar with it. You're referring to BNBR. Is that a is that a commercial entity or a website? You've never heard of BNBR? Yeah. No. No. Is that a, no, no, that's uh, okay. well, it's a, it's a state law that's been passed. It's been brought up in the oh, planning okay. commission yeah. meetings, the board of supervisors meetings, BCA oh. meetings, uh, oh, and I've been going to meetings for two years. I'm just not familiar with that nickname, sir. Are you referring to the the BNBR, legislature? Yeah. 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 Which has nothing to do with hunting. Right? Yeah, what? Which has nothing to do with hunting, as I understand it. The NPR. Right? No, I know. I heard tonight for the first time that it may that they're actually sure. they're sure. actually uh, looking at 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 uh, doing the BNBR hunting kind of. Thing. Shed a little light on this. This chairman's come up in a supervisor's meeting and brought to attention. If you look um, at the uh, cooperative, I think it's called cooperative living. Uh, it's the uh, Rappahannock Electric Co-op mag monthly magazine. If you look in, I can't remember if it's the inside front cover or the back cover, um, there is actually a, uh, uh, an organization not unlike an Airbnb where if I have a property and I want to put it on, my web on that website uh, and offer it to out-of-community hunters to come in, they rent it just like a BNB. &B. They will pay a certain amount of money and for a certain period of time, and uh, it's I, I, I'm told, and I have not confirmed this, that there's nothing, nobody has signed, there's no property in Rappahannock that's registered on its site. Some citizens have said they've gone to the site and looked for properties in Rappahannock, and they haven't found any yet. But I think Mr. Nash is maybe making a reference to that. Um, certainly, you have the right, you know, you can give somebody the right to hunt on your property. We're all very familiar with that. But this is actually more in the long run. Commercial. 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 John, I don't know if this guy was involved in that. Yeah. All I know is you know, <coughs> I hunt up here with Brad and whatever, but I don't think Brad owns the Whipperwill LLC. <laughs> and that's, that's all I'm saying. I, uh, I just want to know what our property rights are in regard to that. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Yes. I'd like to follow through on that. There's would, you, would you mind if your oh. name is? Uh, Jennifer Alexander, I live in Flint Hill. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I guess my questions to follow up for both of you is um, hunting, I believe, will be considering agricultural use of your land. And I believe there's some fair amount of people who rent out, lease out their farm properties yeah. as an income producer to people who want. That's been going on since I moved here 30 years ago. And the only way I know that you can semi-protect yourself is put a no hunting sign on your side, um, maybe a large one. Um, but I believe oh, I'm being pretty good. Um, okay. I believe it's legal. There's a lot of it. It certainly is in our district. <laughs> um, and it's not new. And it's not just friends. This is money changing hands. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Big Woods Hunt Club on leased land for the last umpteen decades? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, as an example, you may want to check with them how they make sure it stays safe. There's no overnight accommodations with any of these that I know, but certainly. You do want people that know um, how far they're going to shoot. Um, and along the same line with the BNBs, no matter what they tell people they can do on the property, whether it's hiking, fishing, hunting, driving, um, I would say that 
instructing people, the visitors, where the property lines are, does seem to be a recurring problem in our part of the world. Um, I address it with them individually. Sometimes that involves calling the sheriff's department to get people off mine because they don't believe me <laughs> about what I am. Um, but good luck. Um, the I, don't, I don't call the government. <laughs> Um, but I agree with you. I agree that I, I wasn't sure. Excuse me. Public comments, if you wouldn't mind addressing your comments to the commission. Okay. Um, the second part of my comment had to do with the proposed amendments, I guess they are, that you read. The proposed zoning ordinance. Pro proposed zoning ordinance. Ordinance yeah. changes. Um, what would you think about a request to not vote on those until they've had time to be in the paper for a month? Just to be clear, the action before us tonight is to discuss having scheduling a hearing on those proposed amendments. Well, we will not be acting on this. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I didn't have an agenda. I'll stop. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, the uh, website that he's referring to is called Outdoor Access. And it's on the front inside front cover of Rabbit uh, Cooperative. Uh, page one, Jackson District. Uh, good evening. I'd like to welcome Holly to the Planning Commission and look forward to her expertise being applied to the county zoning issues. First, I want to address the comprehensive plan and thank you, Al, for getting it on the agenda today. Well, well needed. The comprehensive plan is years overdue, over two five-year cycles. The Virginia Code uh, 15 to 22, 23, and 2224 required analyses and studies have not been started, more or less completed. Meanwhile, it appears the county is not achieving the goals in the plan. You and others have stated that you believe the plan is good and has served the county well. Where is the data to support your case? Let me be clear. I support the goals, principles, and policies in the plan. But from a results standpoint, it is hard to see where the plan has produced the desired results. Farmland is being subdivided into weekend and retirement villas. Residences are being built on hilltops impacting the view shed. Elderly citizens on fixed incomes can't afford real estate tax increases. Those that don't qualify for land use pay at a disproportionately higher amount of real estate tax, lower income and long-time residents are being pushed out of the county. The interests of current <coughs> residents are being supplanted by the interests of non-residents. The county is rapidly becoming the Hamptons of the Piedmont. Those aren't the land use and taxation results envisioned in the comprehensive plan. I understand that you are not properly compensated for your time that doing this analysis is time consuming. Simply expecting an overworked, overloaded county administrator or zoning administrator to do this work is unrealistic. You need to reach out to the numerous people that have asked for action on the issue and volunteer their time and resources to do this assessment work. We need to know where we are, which direction we're headed before we decide how to go forward. Mm -hmm. That brings me to tourist homes. The primary purpose of zoning is to balance the interest of landowners and neighbors. The current zoning ordinances and zoning decisions regarding tourist homes are creating significant controversy, you all put up with it all the time, in the county because those interests are not in balance. The root issue of residency is not being addressed. In, in general, people don't seem to have a problem with tourist homes if the landowner is a resident on the property. The issue when the property is an investment, the issue is when the property is an investment being used for short-term rentals. I doubt any of you would buy property in Duck, North Carolina, primarily a tourist home community, and, and live there full time. I wouldn't. All right. Again, that is not the land use envisioned in the comprehensive plan. Much has been said about the county revenue generated by tourist homes through the hospitality and sales taxes. The numbers do not back that up. All of the counties, all of the counties, meals and lodging and sales tax revenue combined 
of which tourist homes is a very small part, is only 6% of the real estate tax revenue. There are currently 35 approved tourist homes, about 1% of the county residences, that generate less than $10,000 in revenue. If every county resident residence became a tourist home, the county would gain one-tenth of the revenue of real estate taxes, assuming the market would support that, which I doubt it would. All right. The numbers just don't work for tourist homes providing significant revenue to the county. The limited revenue does not justify overlooking neighbors' concerns. I believe most taxpayers would prefer a small tax increase rather than becoming the Outer Banks or the Hamptons. You need to focus on the interests of the current residents, not the interests of non-residents. In addition to limiting the conflicts in the tourist home zoning amendments that are before you today, I think you know what those conflicts are, I urge you to include a residency requirement on tourist homes, particularly in agricultural zones. I'm not saying to prohibit tourist homes that are investment opportunities, but they should be regulated similar to a hotel, which is more of a similar use than a residence. Thank you for your time and your prompt attention to these issues I've raised. As always, if there's anything I can do to help with these issues, just ask. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I have a question. Lisa Wood, Washington, Virginia. Um, I just want to be clear, you guys are not voting on these proposed changes tonight, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank we will be, you. We will be discussing the, the prospect of, of publicizing a hearing and then the logistics associated with that moment. Oh, I'm sorry, the prospect of a of publicizing a hearing at our next meeting. Okay, so there's a possibility that you won't do that as well? It's on the agenda tonight to be discussed, so I don't want to prejudice, prejudice that discussion. But, uh, the item to discuss is where we go with those amendments, okay. and I believe the likely outcome is that we will agree in some manner to uh, have a public hearing at our next meeting. Wonderful. And I'd like on the record to say I support that idea. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, sir. Um, Marine Falls from Hampton. And the topic is water. About eight or ten years ago, we had Ken Bondler, who's a hydrologist, come okay, in and talk to leadership in the county. We were worried about water. And the things that Tim brought out to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors are actually coming true. He was surprisingly accurate. Uh, it's not a very pleasant thought. It's a problem here. But at any rate, we might want to look at this again and see if there's things we can do. And if we have the time, I would suggest that uh, an ideal thing for the planning commission to do is take a good look at water. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? If not, uh, we'll have like to close tonight's public comment period and uh, move on to a whole business. <clears throat> um, I gotta resist the temptation to say, John, I just have to. Uh, That's okay. I, I know I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> um, fellow commissioners, um, I think the first item tonight is, is the table that was referred to earlier. Um, for the interest of the audience and to refresh all of our collective memories, uh, we had a table of uh, amendments that I believe <coughs> originated with some proposals that Mr. Connick had, had submitted um, over the course of several months of meetings uh, with a few interruptions. We have uh, gone through and discussed and voted on each one of those and the results of that review are reflected in the in the table that I believe is a, is part of the packet and, and on board talks tonight. So I believe the question before us this evening, although I have opened up for discussion, um, certainly and I'm open to other suggestions. But I believe the, the matter before us tonight is is where to go next with these. Um, I have to say, for my own part, it wasn't clear to me that the next step would be for us to uh, schedule a public hearing. But I gather that in fact that is uh, the the. Correct next step uh, for these uh, 
for these amendments. So I believe that the discussion tonight should be uh, around whether and how and when and any other issues associated with scheduling a hearing on these proposed amendments. So with that, I will certainly ask my fellow commissioners if anyone would like to talk about that. Mr. Berg? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Uh, I think that this, uh, as uh, many people have said, is past due, and that I think that it, in planning when, where, and how to do it, we ought to try to fit into uh, the Board of Supervisors schedule so that uh, the results of our meeting can be uh, substantive and functional for the supervisors' meeting which follows. Thank you. Any other Mr. Brown, would you like to? No comment. Mr. Lezinski? Um, no, just that I, I echo your, uh, I'm feeling that your, rec your recommendation is solid in that um, these have been looked at with great care by the Planning Commission over an extended period of time, both with Mr. Frazier and myself sitting here. and. Um, Actually, not to jump ahead, but with the respect to the next agenda item, probably sinks in well uh, with with the timing of that discussion of, of that uh, resolution. So, yeah, I would I would be supportive of just moving this on to uh, a public hearing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mead. I know you weren't here for much of that, but do you have any questions or commentary on this? Um, I don't. I, I agree with the. So this is going to be a meeting that's going to be called by the board supervisor, not the planning commission, correct? Right? I believe this is the planning commission's public hearing. At, uh, well, well, I think we should take a motion on it. But my under my thought is, and this is being driven largely by the more explicit directive in the in the later item about the you know in the in the uh, resolution before us later, uh, we've been directed to to. Uh, have a public hearing at our next meeting in October, and to me, uh, it would be a, a, a logical uh, suggestion, and I would make a motion eventually, I think, to uh, propose that we have both of those those items that have kind of uh, converged uh, on us here, uh, advertised and uh, discussed at a public hearing at our October meeting. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Henry's point, um, there was I think some confusion at the board of supervisor level as to why this was coming back to the planning commission, given that it had just been sent by the planning commission to the board. Um, but we had Mr. Goff in our meeting, and I think Mr. Damron weighed in as well. And I, I guess it's procedural uh, that this come back to the planning commission, and, and if it's so, you know, so decided that it's the planning commission the public hearing. Uh, in which these would be considered. But we deferred to Mr. Goff and Mr. Dameron's recommendation on that and sent it back to the planning commission. I don't know if that clears anything out about it. Just anything else, Mr. Dameron? <clears throat> so it sounds like there's general agreement. I would entertain a motion. Uh, I believe the, the, the matter before us is to, is whether we uh, would like to direct the zoning administrator to uh, proceed with noticing, providing notice and comment, and scheduling the public hearing on that table of amendments at our October meeting. Any, get such a motion? Well, well, just, just, just maybe in case there's some logistical problems, uh, can we just hold off on that and discuss on the new business, the zoning amendment to tax, and maybe two of them both at the same time? Just to see if there's any issues there about them going together. I don't have any problem with that. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's a little bit unusual for the supervisors to, you know, to send down, you know, what they sent to us and the format they sent it to us. So we're, we're going to talk about that, and the both is it's so we soon going to be a joint. I think we're going to have a, a public hearing for both or higher at the same time at the same <clears> night. Uh, I'm not, is that right? That's what, yes. Okay. 
that's I mean, given that I don't, it's not clear to me at this point that they are compatible with one another. I think it behooves us to have the hearing together so that we can work that out at one point, other rather than discuss one set at one meeting and the other at a different meeting. So, even though I think that could be a confusing prospect, I think it's pretty much the only path. I think David will enjoy working on this. Already scheduled, Mr. Goff. But I, I don't, you know, as to your suggestion to hold off on the vote, you know, you're, you're taxing my meeting leadership skills here a bit, but I'll, I'll, we can come back to the vote if you prefer. Is that the sentiment of the, the commission? Or would you rather? I, I see no problem with that. Okay. So let's just hold on that item. And uh, if I may move us forward to a new business, the item two, the proposed zoning amendments uh, from the September 2017. This being the uh, resolution passed by the Board of Supervisors um, with a variety of changes, most related to the, um, the distinction between a special permit and a special exception. Um, and, a and a limit, proposing to eliminate that distinction, um, which to me is not a matter uh, of, uh, you know, really a matter for the Planning Commission to decide. But in having, having read the, the resolution more closely, I do believe there are some procedural matters in there and there are some additional items embedded in those changes um, that are, I believe, more relevant to our discussion. Um, and be that as it may, the resolution directs us to uh, conduct a public hearing on the matter. So, uh, and if you look at the resolution itself, it, it actually specifies that we schedule this hearing uh, and notify for this hearing at our October, I believe it's 16th meeting, our regular meeting in October. So, uh, as has already been discussed, it seems to me that if we're going to have a hearing on proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance, even though it might be a little confusing since there's two sets of them floating around, that um, I guess my inclination would be to have a single hearing for uh, both sets of amendments. But um, why don't we sort of start with that or any other um, concerns or issues that any of the commissioners uh, would like to start with. Mr. Henry, you want to pick up on that? But just two things. As I understand it, the, the whole purpose, well, maybe not the whole purpose, but the majority of the purpose of this is to eliminate the BZA and the decision process here and, and, this, and the chain, chain of events here. Well, but, Eric, uh, maybe I can give a little background please. because this originated from the supervisor's meeting um, and it was Actually, something that, that again, Mr. Goff and Mr. Damron had brought to the attention of the board um, for multiple reasons. Uh, I think uh, primarily to simplify the process. I think there's been a lot of confusion in the community about whether or not uh, an application uh, is uh, destined to be a special use permit or a special exception, and when that. Uh, where that uh, particular uh, application will be heard once, it, once uh, the Planning Commission makes its recommendation. Also, as presented by Mr. Damron and, and Mr. Goff, uh, it represents having that uh, distinction between a special exception and a special use permit creates an additional burden on staff um, to distinguish between the two. Um, and so it would help streamline staff work and. Mr. Damron wants to comment on that when I'm finished. I, I welcome his thoughts. Um, there was also a feeling, and this came more from Mr. Goff, that um, the, the people did not have an opportunity uh, to necessarily, um, uh, and I hate to use the word recourse because that's not the right word here, but when and a when a uh, special exception goes to the Board of Supervisors and the community is not pleased with that, they have the ability to basically uh, express their opinion at the ballot box because the Board of Supervisors is an elected body, as opposed to uh, special use permits that go to BZA, which of course we all know is a judicial body and is appointed by a judge. And the people do not necessarily have direct 
well, they do not have direct uh, input on that. So it, it was also an issue of the legislation, legislative versus the judicial for those that want to kind of look to the constitutional arguments. Um, the resolution passed four to one. Uh, Mr. Frazier uh, was the dissenting vote, but Mr. Frazier's concern was whether or not this resolution was uh, out in front of the last item we took up, which was the changes the Planning Commission had worked on. And now that it looks like uh, there's a possibility of syncing those two documents together, I think, Mr. and I cannot speak for Mr. Frazier, but I do know that that was one of his concerns. And I think we, you know, we, um, we answer that by looking at these, at these two documents together. Um, so with, with that, um, and Mr. Dameron, Mr. Goff put a lot of effort, obviously, into going through the entire uh, Rappahannock County Code to make the uh, recommended changes here about uh, uh, what need, would need to be changed to streamline everything, which, by the way, a lot of community, other communities do. Um, not every community, but I think, again, Mr. Dameron, if you want to pine here, I've been told that the majority of communities in the Commonwealth do not have a distinction between special use and special exception. So, um, for many, for a lot of those, for those reasons, you know, the board took all that into consideration and then, and then voted uh, to uh, pass the resolution on to the planning commission for for its uh, it, its its review, it, its comments, and its recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Lisinski. Your commentary, Mr. Henry, if you'll indulge me, uh, reminded me of. Two uh, items that I would note related to the resolution. Uh, clearly, the primary purpose of the changes is to deal with this distinction, but there are other items embedded in there. Uh, one that uh, struck most clearly to me, given the form of the resolution now, which is a little bit hard to follow because it's all just a description of the changes. One of the changes, as I understand it, would uh, change the way we move forward any application for a special use um, uh, and, and, ha and have us uh, approve or vote on uh, each application before it is, it is posted for a hearing. So I do encourage you uh, to look at the specifics of this resolution before our, we have an actual public hearing on it because while it is certainly true that the primary purpose is that distinction, there are some other uh, items embedded in here that shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, and related to that point, uh, one of the items in the resolution I think would be very helpful to us as well as to, to the community is the idea that there be a, an actual markup of this document uh, with the changes uh, identified and highlighted so that one doesn't have to, you know, put the puzzle together oneself to find out wh what's being added. For example, there are a few sections that simply say, you know, to be removed in its entirety. Well, I have not gone back and looked exactly yet at what those items would be. I would do that before we have an actual hearing, but it would certainly be ideal, and I think uh, it's been, and, and uh, Mr. Dameron's been directed in the resolution itself to, to, uh, to have such a, a markup, and I certainly think we would need to have that distributed in, in ample time to have a, a serious conversation about what those changes are. But having looked at it as much as I have, I just want to make those points. There are a couple of other items. And so Mr. Henry, I'm sorry, back to you. So, uh, <clears throat> this is me, you agree, you, what, what's your opinion on, is this what you see in a normal course of, of your job? We're looking at the same thing now in Faulkner County, or Faulkner County is looking at the same thing, and we have found just much, like you said, the majority of counties do streamline them. Um, with that said, I, I do think um, process needs to be paid attention to, and um, you know, when is something complete? And to just to, uh, again, I've asked for the market version as well, and I think that would allow us to fully understand the impact of the proposed changes. I guess the, the one conflict that that I see between our document and the supervisor's item that came down from the flow to us is that uh, we, we said 10 acres uh, for bread and breakfast and tourist homes and libraries and 20 acres 
in the conservation zone, and, and the board version, I think, is two and five. If I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Henry. Yeah, I, and I apologize because I should brief that when I gave the background. If, if you look at page six, there's a note in the margin there simply says amend lot size, but the board did not necessarily agree with or agree that it needed to be discussed further. And of course, in fact, you know, a lot of this falls in here. Was exactly as Mr. Henry said, a distinction. I don't think the board, because we have this matter about what the board in 2010 did or did not agree to, um, that's still, I guess, an open issue. And, and the board of supervisors felt that that issue, did it, you know, is it really two and five or, you know, uh, was that ever embraced or should it be 10 and 20 as the planning commission has recommended? But that issue, which is um, 66K4, uh, 170-66K4, could be a big part of the public, the public hearing and what this board discusses. And it's to the heart of the matter of a couple of the comments we heard today in public comment as, as well. So there, there's no final recommendation or um, so language has been, you know, inserted in here. It, it's really, if anything, kind of uh, needs to be needs to be uh, agreed to and filled in. Uh, Mr. Dowling, can I express that problem? Yes. yes. Is that your understanding? Okay. Right. So, as so, usual. So, so we'll be advertising something, an item that there's two conflicts, it's two different versions of it, but we will be advertising that that way. Okay. I believe Mr. Golf and I are going to have a meeting to decide. I'm going to advertise that. Uh, you are there, is Yes, we are. So you all might take the decision that you're going to strike what the Planning Commission did, or you're going to make a decision to strike what the Board of Supervisors had and go and move on with it? No, decide how to advertise. I don't know how we're going to combine yeah. the two. Okay. Right. I mean, it does seem like a logistical issue, but at a more practical level, it seems that the issue is what should the acreage sizes be going forward. I know there is an additional legal question about looking backwards and the status of existing decisions and resolutions, I don't believe that is a matter for us. It seems to me that while it may be a challenge to advertise it, uh, you know, this body has spent a fair amount of time on this. It was not a unanimous uh, decision, as I recall, when we went through it the first time. I think the, the questions are pretty clear. It's the answers that are a little less clear. So I think if we have this as an item to be uh, discussed and have a hearing on, um, we should be able to, to cover the waterfront in terms of what we want it to be going forward. Well, it seems like one of the things I want to talk about is it seems like the advertising part of it has been one problem. The County government has had a lot of problems with this. Yeah. So I just mm -hmm. want to try to have some direction here and compatibility. Point taken. Mr. Wazinski, do you have further enough. comments on Mr. Brown, do you care to weigh in on this matter? Mr. Brown, do you like to have the material read? Uh, understandable. Mr. Bird. I think this is a, a an important thing to do, and we're doing it at a kind of critical time. Uh, from my experience on the BZA, uh, there are a lot of rather contentious uh, meetings and issues that have been brought before the BZA, and it would seem that the supervisors would uh, provide uh, a more refined uh, venue for these to be discussed. And <clears throat> I think that uh, as a result of this, the, uh, uh, the only aspect of it that I see uh, questionable is uh, I would wonder whether the supervisors really wanted to paint themselves into a corner with uh, requirements when they can make each decision on its merits. 
and, and they are ultimately the final authority on this. Thank you, Mr. Bird. So, uh, sensing the um, feeling of the commission, it seems to me we're to a point where we it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to uh, ask the zoning administrator to, in coordination with the uh, county attorney, um, come up with uh, the proper language to notice these both sets of proposed amendments and schedule a hearing uh, at the time of our next planning commission meeting. I would say something of time, time convenience. Maybe, maybe it sounds good for October, but maybe by the time they make all the changes, it may well be in November. I would, I would say motion should say appropriate time. Frame. And if we're going to do that, I would say it should also be contingent upon the, avail the availability of said markup uh, for our purpose as well as that of the public. So, uh, I don't know, Mr. Henry is. Would you like to make a motion of that sort? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, recommend that uh, both 170802, uh, uh, both the uh, proposed zone amendments 2017 and proposed zone amendments May 2017 be set for a public hearing for, for the legal requirements of convenience of, of staff and county attorney. There a second. A second. Just um, for the discussion, Mr. Henry, would you uh, be opposed to um, referring to the need to have the actual markup language available? Let's sure. uh, modify that. Yeah, mark that. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. I believe um, that brings us to the uh, two items that we added. Mr. Henry, maybe I'll turn to you for the first one. Uh, I believe it was the idea of the proposed BZA um, appointee to the planning. Yeah. Um, I think Rappahannock County is very unique in, in that uh, the way the, the planning commission is structured with members of the board of supervisors and also uh, BZA members that uh, set on, on the board that the, it's supposed to, I guess, I guess by an appointment of, of, of the board of supervisors, but I think actually it, it's, it's, it's a recommendation from the uh, uh, BZA that goes to the board that, and then they make vote on it when it comes to us, and we really don't have uh, much say in, in uh, uh, who sets with us. And this is not, Chris, you've been a wonderful member and everything. And all the board members, pretty much from the BCA, have, have served terms on the uh, on the planning commission, and this is going to sound pretty radical, but uh, I, I, I would like to say, that I think next year, that I would like to put in a request that the BCA consider uh, sending over Dave Connick to set on the planning commission. And this may sound crazy and radical, but uh, <clears throat> uh, a couple times uh, I've asked for Art Goff to, to come and, and, and be part of the planning commission, and one or two members of the board of supervisors said no uh, for whatever reason. So we've been left without legal counsel, and uh, I think Dave's uh, batting average is getting better, and uh, uh, I think he adds a, a, a lot of. A, 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 Legalities that, that we are sometimes missing that drags things on, and I think uh, you get him on this side of the table. I think he can be a, an asset, and uh, it, it's it's a little bit radical, but we've gone through a lot of changes in this county, and as Mr. Uh, Duran <clears throat> said, that uh, you know we need to draw on some people, and I think we could draw on him on this side of the table. So that's all I have to say. We can think about it for a month and laugh at me, whatever. But that's number one. But number two, uh, you know, we've been. Dragging on this uh, comprehensive plan for a long, long, long time. Uh, sorry, Mr. Henry. If, if, if you mind, before we move on to that, and I'm 
guessing there's not going to be a lot of takers for this, but before we move on to the yeah. second one, could I ask if other commissioners have, would like to have any comment on, on the first item since it wasn't, they were separate items on the agenda? Would anyone like to comment on that request? Okay. Sorry, Al, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, secondly, uh, the comprehensive plan has been dragging on for a long time, and I, I can remember back two or three chairmen ago when Charlie Strickland was chairman, I, I brought up to uh, uh, John McCarthy at the time and uh, Charlie about, you know, when we going to get started on the uh, comprehensive plan. <coughs> and at that time, he said, well, we're right waiting for the census data to come. Well, the census data has come and gone, and it's you know, probably changed somewhat, which will be coming up in, in the forthcoming years, two years, or whatever. And uh, we, we've put it off, and we, it's been a lot of changes in, 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 uh, in the county government administration and in the government itself. And I think we need to bite the bullet and, uh, and get this behind us, get it done, and try to set a, a schedule. We tried to set a schedule earlier in 2017, and we picked up some momentum for 30 or 60 days, and then it disappeared. So I think we, we need to get this done and get it behind us and get back to a, a normal plateau where we can you know, start uh, achieving some results. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Um, before I turn to my other commissioners, I would just uh, note that I know there have been some discussions <clears throat> now that the transition of the, the zoning administrator is completed. Um, I think we have had, uh, once again, another fairly compelling reason to, to, uh, to slow down. I don't think it's a desirable situation. I don't think it, something we want to continue, so I certainly agree with you. Uh, I would comment, however, that, uh, and my concern is, you know, we've been through this thing now twice, uh, uh, completely going around the county, talking about it, marking it up, voting on changes, uh, and my understanding that from our last set of discussions is that uh, the only thing that was remain remained to be finished from the point of view of the commission was the uh, updating of the informational sections. And I think there's some questions that remain about what the status <coughs> of, the, of the, that effort is and how we get that finished. And I understand that there are some uh, conversations taking place with the, new, with the new team about how we might accomplish that. Uh, those are, uh, but I agree with you, we need to get this back on, uh, back on track uh, uh, very much. So, other, other comments from the commissioner? I'm sorry, Al. I heard rumors that some of the uh, maybe information has been lost or misplaced with, 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 with the previous county administrator. Is that true? I'm not aware of where it is, so I would have to find out. So, um, I don't know if it's been misplaced. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it. Well, again, with respect to the actual text of the chapters, including the chapter six, which is the one that we have specifically voted as a body to put forward to the uh, Board of Supervisors. Um, the posted draft on board docs, to the best of my knowledge, is the latest working draft of all the other chapters, with the exception of the, the data tables. So um, I would just as we get back into this, I would encourage commissioners and members of the public who have a strong interest in this to, uh, you know, focus on that as the as the st starting or resumption point, if you will, uh, of where we are on this process. Mr. Chairman, uh, just curious, uh, other board members think about this, and maybe it's just absolutely not a good idea or not the right thing. But part I think the problem with the comprehensive plan as far as getting it done in a timely fashion is uh, lack of staff that we have had or probably still have as it relates to workload on the comprehensive plan. And um, is there any merit to reaching out to the Rappahannock Rapidan Regional Commission for some of the assets that they have in their, uh, in their plan? You know, they have a, uh, in they fact, have a plan. I, we have, I have personally delivered uh, information from that body to uh, uh, our county representatives uh, along the course of this process. So I certainly agree with that in principle. I think this gets back to 
and what is the current status of the informational uh, sections of the, of the report. Right. I was just thinking about a way of how do we accelerate this forward and just get the whole thing done. And if we're stumbling as far as whether we know these chapters are even around anymore, or, you know, Mr. Baron sounds like he hasn't had an opportunity to look at this yet. Um, are there any resources that are, you know, that we're that we belong to, which obviously we do, RRC, you know, I'd be interested in hearing other members on the commission here if they have a thought as to whether or not that's merit worthy or if it's, you know, not worth pursuing. Um, or if it's about it's certainly, certainly, I, I not for the planning commission, maybe some of the board supervisor. But. Sure, I mean, I think. You know, we're all interested in overcoming whatever obstacles or uh, friction stands between us and finishing this. Um, you know, it's if you look at the sum total of time that we've spent on this over the past, uh, it's got to be two or three years now, I think. Um, certainly, it started a year uh, before uh, John McCarthy left. So, certainly, uh, we need to keep pushing this thing along. It is a, I think it is a staff resource challenge. Again, my understanding is we were almost there, but for the data tables. Now, most of those tables, um, you know, the sources were cited, and they were specific sources either from, um, you know, the various demographic databases, uh, Ag Department information, Census Bureau data. So I, I believe that the, um, the task, though it may be fairly involved, is uh, at least in one form fairly clear in, in that you know, there's a table. It currently ends in 2004, and there are data available for every two years. We'd like to see 6, 8, and 10, and 12, or whatever interim data exists. So I do think the, the path is, is fairly clear on, on that item. There may be others, and again, each time, each time there's uh, you know, more time passes, there, there's more interest, and I do think every time we go through this, we need to reflect again and, and take the pulse of the public with respect to the other sections, and I don't mean to diminish that. I just feel like that is pretty clearly where we were when we left off on this process after our working meetings. And that, to me, is, is a certainly a necessary, it might not be the only thing we have to do, but it is, it is clearly what we have to do, and I, and I agree with you, if there are other resources we can tap to get that done, um, you know, I, I think that should be part of this discussion. I don't know if that needs to be a discussion during one of these meetings. Obviously, it involves it involves others, uh, not just the folks here and, and David. So, um, I, I'm all for that. I don't, other commissioners have any uh, care to weigh in on that? I think it would be beneficial to schedule a time just so we can get an update of is that really where we are and, and what is left to, to be done, and then. And we'll set the schedule and reach out to our RRC um, or any other groups that could help. I think first we have to know where we are. Good assessment, yeah, for a little. Mr. Hannon? I think that's wonderful. Uh, I'd like to bring up next month all business will be my recommendation for the BCA. It'll be all business next month. Give everybody a month to think about it. Okay. Well, if I'm not mistaken, um, that concludes the items on our agenda for this evening. Um, our next scheduled meeting is for October 18th, 2017 at 7.30 here. Uh, assuming that things proceed order, in an orderly fashion with the notice and comment, I think we can expect that to be a, a public hearing meeting. And with that, I take a, I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Stand up. <laughs>